welcome back to my channel angels warm welcoming to my new angels as y'all can see this like my energy is not there today and this is the type of this is the type of topic that will always drain my energy you know I've always wanted to speak about this but I don't even know how to start where to begin you know so there was a time like I spoke to my sister about it but I told her I don't know exactly when that I'm ready you know but I ended up speaking you know I ended up praying about it and I told God whenever you think I'm ready put me out there put me in front of the camera and let me speak out my emotions because this thing is literally an everyday pain we're suffering and everyday pain just imagine a wound that never heals you know and the current situation that's happening at the moment with um, George Floyd death it just it triggered everything you know like it brings back like it it puts the wound to the spotlight you know it expands the wound and it brings back memories you know that memory is always there but it brings it back that you're not thinking right anymore you know i'm driving thinking i'm looking after the kids thinking you know all of this like it's a it's raw now you know so it's like it's a situation that i act i i I truly understood how they feel, how the family feels. Please don't mind my voice if I'm down. It's, there's no energy in it at all, you know. So I'll try to speak up as clear as I can. So, anyways, the situation. It's gone about four years now. This year is gonna be four years. <sighs> I don't even know how to do this. I'll try to go on and off camera just to go <laughs> to go let it out. <clears throat> but I'll try to be strong. I'll try to be strong in front of the cameras I can because I have to let it out, you know. I have come into life of having to speak up instead of bottling things up. As you all can see in my previous videos, I told you guys bottling things up will just end up in the wrong place, you know. So I try to let out my emotions as I can. I normally speak up to my sister about it, but you know it helps. And this, I feel like I had to face the camera now. Like I normally speak about it, but not right in front of the camera facing y'all. So, anyways, for those that know my family, they already know what happened. I'd say it does. Hold up. It's very, very hard. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying for your. <laughs> Ooh. Anyways, for those that know my family, they know that um, my little brother was about four years ago on the twenty-first of December, just four days before Christmas, guys. The four, three days before Christmas, basically, because we don't count the other, the other, the actual day. So, anyways, three days before Christmas, whoever knew on the twenty-first of two thousand and sixteen, whoever knew, you know, the kind of news will come through. So I used to live with my um for with my kids back then in Ipswich and then with my ex husband. So on that day I woke up feeling so heavy. I woke up feeling so heavy, like I was so moody. My part my ex partner come from work and I'll give him the mood, you know, and I don't know what's causing it, you know. So he received he received a call on private. They called him, and then out of nowhere, like he didn't show the emotions, just to, you know, to make me, 
made me realize what's actually going on so and the from Ipswich to Northside you guys know it's already like a nail driving so he tried to distract me at that time so I won't have to find out until I get to mum's house you know and after that we like he distracted me on the way talking about all this stuff to get my mind you know trying not to get into that you know and before that like we lost our uncle there was a few people that passed away in my relatives before my little brother came through so it was like death after death death after death so we drove all the way to mom's house and at that time you know it was grandma grandmother passed away mom's mom passed away so at that time mom is still grieving and i actually thought that was the reason why we were there you know <clears throat> So, as everybody's being, you know, in our, in our thing, in our culture, when someone passed away, we normally get, like, they get us all together and then break the news, you know. So, they got us all together and then my, you know, my mom was just still grieving about the grandma, so I wouldn't comforted her. And then, more news came through. My sister actually broke this down for us. You know, she dropped the bomb and said, "Like my little brother was found here." I didn't hear it at the start, and then she repeated it again, and my mind went boom. You know, like that. It went into shock. Like I just, I let go of mom, and I don't know what I did after that. I just don't know. I felt my, my, my body was numb. I think I was on the floor. I don't even know what I, I was. It was heavy. It's something that you don't expect at all from your family. None of that at all. I know he chose the wrong path, but nobody deserves for their life to be cut short. So at the time, our minds are just playing around, you know, because the, the police came to the door, like, they found him about a kilometer away. So after that time, I'm screaming and I want to know what happened, you know, at that time you want answer straight away. So you're trying to like, where was he? Where is he now? What happened? You know, can we see him? Is it true? You know, all these questions running on your head. You're asking so many questions. And the other person that you're asking question is, is shocked as well. So nobody's got anything, you know. But the oldest always trying to stay strong, you know. And it just made mom even more down. She just passed out. My little brother went out. I don't know what happened with my other brothers. Everybody was just everywhere. It's just that let's say like we're all in a group and then they drop they drop a bomb in the middle and everybody just go they just it was it was heavy <clears throat> but anyways the next day came at that time it was night time so it was a restless night it was a really restless night because everybody's thinking everybody's crying you don't th uh, there's a lot of different grievings in every single corner you know and it was the toughest time of the family. He was only 20. And they say he committed suicide. So it was a bit hard to put that in our system, you know. Because on that day in the morning, the police came. You know, my sister was telling us the police came. Uh, his body was found in the morning, you know, in the afternoon. And and the police came around 8, 8 p.m. Yeah, the body was found around 5 and then the, the police came around 8 p.m. And the place was about kilometers away, just, you know, just a bush next to mom's house. He was found there hanging on an electrical pole, you know, a pole that he's literally, his feet, 
is a few centimeters away off the floor you know he's hanging I did not see a photo but my big brother saw it and my big sister saw it and I'm pretty sure it's traumatizing until today to them my, at least my older sister speak about it but my my older brother is a bit hard but you can tell through his body language you know but anyways I'm trying guys, I'm trying to stay, <laughs> stay as strong as I can, you know. So it was found, the news got broken, like the, the police knocked the door and thank God my sister opened the door because if it was my mum it would have been a different story, you know. So my sister answered the door and they, they asked like, you know, where his room just to go check if there's any belongings that he left behind, if there's any messages that he left behind because apparently it's suicide but there was nothing left so they went and checked the room but there was nothing there so they told my sister and then I don't know how my sister kept it for that long around my mum I mean she handled it very very well like she's, I would say she's the strongest out of the family because the first person to hear that news I wouldn't know what to do I wouldn't know how to react but she kept it really well until she ended up telling the whole family you know so anyways the next day came through and everybody wants to see where it happened you know so it's literally it's less than a kilometer even so you can just walk there we walk there and we're trying to find out evidence you know at that moment you just need an answer straight away you know? so we're going we'll go into the spot and he's literally a big person he's a tall person he's a really tall person so at the, with that height like measuring everything i'm pretty sure he would have just like given up step on the floor and, you know say nah i'm not doing this you know if it was a suicide you know so at that moment, we're trying to search the area, but there was, you know, a thing that I don't understand is how, I don't know how they handle his body. They threw everything around, like, you know how, like, when you handle a body, you have to handle it in a respectful way. You know, all the equipment that you guys used, you need to put it in the trash. But this one was literally, like, thrown like you know we're finished with this just you're not even supposed to do that in an environment you know like you're supposed to put every trash in the bin but the gloves and the the nylon that they use his body in was just left there with a bit of blood in it you know and that was that was really really disrespectful but anyways We just continued with clueless moments. Everybody's just, you know, at that moment we're coming up with imaginations. Maybe this happened, maybe this happened, maybe this happened. It's all of that until this day of today. Worst part is like, we had to wait a few days, you know, before going to check his body because they had to prepare him and everything, you know. At the coroners so it's a bit tough like, having to go like you know identify like identify his body was really really tough you know like they came out to us and said like apparently we cannot examine all of his body because he's naked his dignity like you're not telling that to a stranger, you're telling that to his relatives, people that pretty much raised him and know about his nakedness, you know. And they always say, like, the only bruise that he's got is the one on his ankle, so maybe he scraped from a skateboard. And yeah, so we went there, we checked his body. They had like bed sheet from the neck down, covered it fully. 
so we were not allowed to check all of his body and that was really really suspicious you know and then there was like there was bruises on his neck here like someone pressed it here there was like a big a big skin that was out you know out of his neck here and there was a few more bruises here so out of suspicion i had to ask one of the ladies like what about those bruises you know that are up here what are they what happened you know although they were like oh maybe it's because he was trying to help himself out yeah like there's bruises off you know trying to help yourself out it's like you scratch yourself going like this you know trying to get rid of that rope but this one was fully like pressed you know so there was, there was a lot of questions there are still a lot of questions right now that has not been answered so with that with that thing about my sister had to like find look for a funeral home so he had to find she found one she like because there was there's a funeral home close to mine the school that i went to the one that i work on now the one that i work with now they had to transfer the body all the way there and we had to go check the whole body you know and i know the first time we to go take the whole body and the answer was right in front of us the answer was right in front of us the whole body was full of bruises like oh man give me a second guys whole body was full of bruises like and then you know what my sister was like the body has to has to go back for an autopsy you know because we don't agree this was a suicide you know it was like bruises all of his body please it's gonna be confronting but I'll put the photo up here you guys can you guys can judge with your own eyes and please tell us if those were end bites you know because after even after the autopsy even after the autopsy they're still holding it as a suicide Heart that's actually killing me. Oh, yes. I'm good. I'm good. After all of that. The results come back as suicide still so at the moment everybody's just stuck because we cannot do anything everything's in the hands of law you know like we have the we have the answers but we're not allowed to put it out there like it's very tough i feel exactly i feel exactly for the floyd's family you know, even though the whole world witnessed that, but the autopsy results comes different. That is, the 
it's you, you don't even know what to do you're built with anger but you don't know where to drop that anger you know so it's just it's 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 full on even right now me putting this video out there it's just i feel like i feel like there's still a part you know there's still a lot to be said but i would just put my emotions out there you know just to speak up and let it out of my system you know if you have met if you have met all my my brothers my siblings they're like the best to hang out with you know so and this one the one that passed away is really hilarious he's gets so much into like you know family activities he's the best cooking barbecue person you know and now now all of that is gone you know, like No, some of it is not the same anymore because oh, man. <sighs> I say I'm trying to be strong, but it's not easy. <laughs> It's not easy. I have tried. I have tried, guys. But, yeah. There's a lot of memories. Really good memories. So, all of that. That's the only thing that we're left with right now. 20 years of memories. You know. And. Nobody. Nobody deserves for their lives to be taken away. Regardless of how bad of a person they are regardless of how bad of the person they were you know nobody deserves for their lives to be cut short because those kind of mistakes in life are the one that will make our future stronger so for his life to be cut short he didn't have, he didn't even have a chance you know to learn from those mistakes that he has done so it's like we're left with that heavy burden in our shoulders, heavy burden in our hearts, you know, so it's not easy every day, it's not easy, but I have tried my best to be in front of this camera and tell you guys exactly how I feel, it's not easy, it's an everyday wound, you know, it's like It's a wound that will never heal. At least, there's like nothing will ever like solve it. You know, even though there's like, even though the truth comes out, at least that will make it a bit. You know, that will like put like a band aid on top of that wound. You know, like at least you know we'll we'll try to move onto that road of trying to heal you know because we already know what happened we like we opened up we opened our heart for forgiveness you know but right now it's just like nobody's there to clean up the wound nobody's there to put a bandit on top of it so we just there left with the wound and you know what happened when the wound is left out for so long it get infected and it just doesn't turn out well you know so that wound inside our heart is just it's becoming way too raw that it's going to rot you know and it's not going to end up well that might put that might end up making someone go crazy but we're trying to stop that from happening you know so if you know anything please please the family is in need of your help please I've tried my best to put the message out there. You know, as y'all can see, it wasn't easy, but I have tried. I have tried. It's been a long time coming, but I have tried, and I finally put it out there. And at least, 
this will make me know all right you know today somebody else might watch it today the different person might watch it and then i'll know one day it will reach those people you know it doesn't matter how long it's going to take you know it will reach them so thank you guys for your time please please don't forget to share you don't have to watch it but just put it out there you know thank you thank you and god bless you all